Good looking now. G. episode is part two of Take Charge to Live Large. In part one, we focused on how to find a career that best suits your skills, talents, and interests while still being successful. Today is just going to be a show on how possible it is to have a career full of people who found their passion through things that are non-conventional. They're here as living proof that you can turn your passion into a career. Entrepreneurs, music producers, and more. You may even know some of them. Stay tuned. The hype begins right after this. Uh. <laughs> it's the girls' night out and we're dressed to kill, but it's way too late to order a meal. Everybody's music artists from around the world. Here's your opportunity to have your music featured on the hype. We are looking for respectful hip hop artists, R and B, soul, pop dance, rock, and inspirational. All you have to do is send us six songs in MP3 format, six professional pictures, one music video if you have one, and a bio of the artist or group. For more info, visit CLAPhilly.com. If you're an African-American girl between the ages of 14 and 18 and you'd like to participate in our workshops, please visit our website on the screen. TV for, by, and about young women on Comcast Channel 66, Philly Cam. Uh. <laughs> it's the girls' night out and we're dressed to kill, but this way, this way. Make sure you guys give love to our hype DJ 007 spinning music of artists from the Philly area. Today, the hype squad includes my co host Blush, who will make sure that the audience has a chance to ask questions. Later on, we'll hear from Saran, who will report on the CLA Sister of the Month. We are now joined by four individuals who have different careers and different paths that have made them reach the passion that they love, okay? So, first we have Ms. Melissa Hopley, who is an international motivational speaker, mental health, anti-bullying advocate, and author of the book, The People You Meet in Life. Next, we have Mr. Carvin Hagens, Grammy Award-winning and multi-platinum selling songwriter, producer, engineer, and co-founder of Karma Productions. Next, we have Nisha Rose, forensic scientist from Philadelphia, who is specializing in, in identification of bodily fluids and crimes. She's also an adjunct professor who teaches forensic serology. And last, we have Ms. Jamira Burley, who is the executive director of the Philadelphia Youth Commission. You all make me so proud. I mean, I'm not in your lives, but I, just reading this alone made me so happy. So let's just start off with this. How did you get into this point of your life slash career? Anybody can go. <laughs> well, as a young girl, I was always interested in crimes, mysteries, detective work. Mm -hmm. I was into reading books uh, such as 
author by Arl Stein. My favorite movie was The Bone Collector. <laughs> and once I realized, like, I was so obsessed with crime, which people think is weird, <laughs> I decided to go to college, uh, get my degree in biology, mm -hmm. in, because initially I wanted to be a forensic pathologist. Mm -hmm. But then I changed my mind and I decided that I wanted to be a forensic scientist. So that's where I, why I am where I am today. Okay. I guess so we're starting as kids. I talked a lot and a lot. I used to get like put in the back of the classroom, get grounded for it, and now I can say like I speak for a living, which mm -hmm. most of my teachers laugh about. But I've always had a passion to want to be in front of people and you know try to help people. And when I got that opportunity, it was like, wow, I can speak and not get in trouble and really <laughs> try to make a difference. So it kind of worked out. So I think for me, um, I think sometimes people choose their career path and other times your career path is chosen for you. Um, so for me, I grew up in a very drug and violent infected community and so one of the things that I noticed is that young people never had a voice in what was going on in city government, in America. And so I wanted to make sure we provided voices for young people and one of the ways I did that was to continue to get engaged. Um, and so I kind of just fell into this position. Okay. Myself, I was a rapper back in the day and I, one of Philly's rappers and I wanted to be the new LL Cool J or whoever you want to call it. But uh, the music industry began to change and get into drug activity and all of the negativity. Mm -hmm. So I decided that that's not what I wanted to do. So I began writing and producing and started working for DJ Jazzy Jeff and Will Smith. And from that spawned into my own company with my partner Ivan Barris. Okay. So you all seem to have chosen something, like you all kind of mentioned, that not most people do. You said how people didn't really like crime and you got in trouble for talking too much and the drug infested community that you wanted to change. So who influenced you the most when going that path? Because we all know we don't go down the path alone. We have somebody there who's pushing us along the way to help us achieve what we want to. So who influenced you most? I would have to say my mother, although it's cliche, uh, but it's myself. the truth. <laughs> <laughs> she was always very supportive and giving me words of wisdom and encouragement. Mm -hmm. It's hard, I think. No, go ahead. There's, there's people around you in real life, and that's what, why my book was called that, because I was influenced by people around me that were already make it, making a difference. I thought I had to be like a certain age to start doing the things I wanted to and the passions, because you have people saying, hey, you know, you're going to try that. What are you thinking? Are you kidding me? You're going to fail. And if you find that inside of you, but when you see all these other people following their dreams and passions, you just grab onto that. And it's like you have something inside of you that is attracted to that. And that's what got me. Okay. Okay. I think for me, it was, like you said, it, every step of my path, there was kind of someone raising expectations for me that kind of made me want to continue to strive for doing something better. But it was really, I think, the death of my brother in 2005 that kind of made, opened my eyes to really what was going on in Philadelphia and ways that I, as a young person, could change it. For me, it was uh, quite a few different people. I had a lot of um, role, male role models in my neighborhood. I, my father wasn't there, but I had a lot of male role models. And one, one of them is Blau Quayum. And one day he came to me and he said, um, my son follow you all the time. He looks up to you. Mm -hmm. So because my son look up to you, give him something to look up to. Okay, okay so yeah. for what I've noticed is that we've got People, like you said before, um, Jamira, that sometimes your career, it chooses you and you don't choose it. And it kind of seems that it's kind of how it is when we didn't know what we wanted to do, but just along the path, we've seen it happen with us that what we've chosen kind of chose us before we even got to choose our own careers. Now, I'm sure the audience has plenty of questions that they have because you guys are awesome. So we're going to turn it to Blush, who's going to ask you all some questions. Good evening. Thank you for being a part of our studio audience. Can you give me your name and tell us what your question is? Uh, my name is Jordan, and my question is, um, what if while you're on your career journey, um, you feel stuck at some point um, on your path to where you're trying to get to? What would you recommend to people who do feel stuck at some point during their uh, career journey? Well, one of my beliefs is, uh, uh, someone told me years ago, don't nothing beat a failure, but a trier. So at every point that I felt like I got stuck, I just persevered through that situation and looked at the, the outcome. Like I, I never focused on my through, I focused on the outcome. So whatever I'm going through, I know that it's ending up for perfect purpose on the other side. And I, um, 
and I, I think one of the biggest misconceptions that a lot of people think is that most successful people have never doubted themselves, have never be, got to a point in their lives where they were like, I don't need to do this or I can't do this. So I think one thing you need to recognize is that everyone go through this point in their life multiple times. I'm at this point right now where I feel like I'm stuck. So I think, like he said, striving through, pushing through, thinking about the end goal, thinking about what could be, um, should kind of be your motivation. It is funny because I feel stuck as well at times, um, but then you have these amazing things happen and then you don't feel stuck. So it's kind of like you have to know that, you know, they say success is there, but to me it's the journey and everything that happens every step of the way. And you have to appreciate everything you've done and look at yourself and say, I can do this. But it is hard at times because you sit there and you're like, you know, I have these dreams and passions. You see other people have them and you're like, why can't I have that? Well, that's not going to give you anything if you just automatically get it. Right. So I think you need to, you know, work towards it to appreciate that. Okay. Let's get the next question. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brianna. Um, throughout college, a lot of my professors and um, advisors, they pushed the, the, the thought of networking to get to your career path. I just want to know from you guys, um, how much big of a role did networking actually play to be, for you to become successful? Networking played a very huge part mm -hmm. in me getting a job as an adjunct professor. I always wanted to teach, and I decided to go to this one networking event just to pass out business cards, but I got a job out of it, and wow. that's how I got the job as an adjunct professor. So it's really important. It plays a really big part. I think literally it's 75% of what you, who you know and 30% of who, what you know. Um, it's really about meeting people because a lot of times you never think that you can do something or you never know about an idea until you meet someone who can really open your mind to a different perspective. Um, so I think it's, it's very important to continue to meet people, never feel shy. Um, the only thing someone can do is say no. And um, I've learned to take re rejection as a kind of an opportunity to continue to ask. It hurts some people though. I know it hurts me yeah. when I hear it. Like, sometimes it's not easy to hear hear no and we know that when we're choosing the path and the career we want you're gonna hear no yeah. no one great made it without hearing no so that's one of the things that I know that we have to deal with is when you hear no don't let it stop you don't let it get you to the point where you can't push forward right okay hi my name is Victoria my question is were there other career paths that you chose prior to what you do now and and you realized that's that wasn't for you and you are, and that's why you are where you are now? Okay, let's have one person answer that. Well, for me, um, it was definitely, I, I, I wanted music, I love music, I sleep music. So rapping was the first thing, because you can hear my voice, I'm not a great singer. <laughs> <laughs> so rapping was the first choice, but um, loving music so much, I couldn't get out of it. So anything that had to do with music is what I pursued and what I went after. I don't have a B plan. Never made a B plan. Music was my A plan, and it was going to have to work. Okay, right. So I'm glad that we have so many questions because you all have really great answers. We're going to come back with more from our audience and from me having the conversation with you all after this. Please stay tuned. We'll be with our, please listen to some music from our local artists. We'll be right back. If you're an African American girl between the ages of 14 and 18 and you'd like to participate in our workshops, please visit our website on the screen. You and I, we be fronting the game. Put you in the zone, now you're forcing a change. Although I want the same, can't move that way because I got constraints. Uh, I don't want to confuse things and make us tie loose like new shoestrings. It gets so hard to communicate between friends once feelings get in the way. Uh, yeah. I know friends ain't supposed to be lovers, no. but there's part of me that still wonders. Yeah. Do that love, huh? Pipes bust when you apply pressure. Airborne, you're infectious. Your persistence is affecting us. Now we can't hang like a necklace. He and V, cause you're next to us. My Diane is too precious. So cutting you off is a mind. I know. I know friends ain't supposed to be like But this part of me that still wonders. I don't know, I don't know. I know friends ain't supposed to be loved. 
watching The Hype, TV for, by, and about young women on Comcast Channel 66, Philly Cam. Loving me ain't complicated, hit it to me and I boom a ring it. First priority, ain't no sapling, lay with my feelings and don't come out swinging. Welcome back. We are still joined here by our wonderful career panel. Just so you all know, the music you just heard was from Bria Murray, one of Mr. Carvin's artists. Great job, good job. Okay, so let's continue on with our conversation. Now, what is the one action that you have taken that has accounted for most of your success? Because some people, they have that like, aha moment. I remember back that like, this is what made it for me. Does anyone have that? I would say I finally started being myself. It was always like, you're people pleasing, you're trying to be this person. Mm -hmm you know, and do this and listen to this. And it's not that you're disrespecting people, but literally the first time I said, I actually love myself and want to do this, not just for me, but to help other people, but for me as well. It was like everybody started flocking to you. Like they could genuinely see you were you. And then that's when everything started happening because you felt like, you know, you had this passion and people were attracted to that because they trusted you as being a genuine person, so. I think for me, it was stop doing what was popular and for the moment and really just doing what I thought was right. Um, I think a lot of times young people, specifically when I was in high school, like everybody wanted to be popular. Everybody wanted to be one of the cool kids. And so people would do things that normally that was that was bad for you. Um, and so I think one of the ways that I kind of realized what I wanted to do is to step outside that comfort zone and to get away from my friends and really do what I wanted to do versus what was popular at the moment. I just believe you have to follow your heart if you know that you want to be successful, you just have to take the, attempt, the steps to get there and do it. And that's the actions that you should take to get towards, you know, getting to, the, leading to the path of success. Myself is um, just determination. There was one point um, at the studio, it was a lot of us, six guys, and um, everybody was music musicians or singers or something extraordinary. And I was just like, yeah, I'm a rapper. So I don't really know how to do this. But if you give me the opportunity, I will know and learn how to do it. So I just put my determination, no sleep, and decided I'm going to learn how to work every piece of equipment in the studio. And I figured it out, and I'm here. That kind of brings me to my next point. Um, one of the things that you face as you're choosing your path and you're really following your heart is the unknown. How did you personally, you know, get past that phase of saying, I don't really know what's going about to happen next, but I'm still gonna push through. Cause I know I'm very type of person who wants to know what's gonna happen next, what's gonna happen next. But when you're really about to make it, you don't really know, but you gotta trust something. So how do you all go past that, that unknown phase? I think there's always that unknown. Mm -hmm. I'm at it right now. I mean, will this book do okay? What's gonna happen? It's really ironic because the forward writer of the book is Marielle Hemingway, became a good mentor friend of mine. She says the magic happens in the unknown. It's so hard to believe, but you have to feel it and know it that, you know, these things are going to happen. You're going to hear, you know, that doors may be shut, but that's going to let you have another opportunity. So I think, you know, that's kind of where the unknown hits me and I'm, I'm trying to believe and have that hope that it's going to be okay. I think for me, I've learned to welcome it. Um, every, like every, when I ran for student government in high school, I lost the first time and then I ran again. And so I'm kind of re recognizing that sometimes you have to lose to win or sometimes you lose and another opportunity that you never expected comes about. So I think you just have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I like that because when you lose and then win, it feels better to win than if you won the first time. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have some time to listen to more audience questions. We have a guest here with us who's also a part of the career panel who's also chosen a path that is perfect for her. We'll have Ms. Blush introduce her. We have Courtney Pulliam, who is a research analyst for the Public Health Management Corporation of Philadelphia. And she will introduce herself and tell us a little bit about what she does. Yeah, so I'm um, at PHMC, also known, um, formerly known as the P um, Philadelphia Management Corporation. I work in the research and evaluation group, which we work on the evaluation of various health programs that we do here in Philadelphia, ranging from diabetes to HIV prevention to nutrition. Can you tell us a little bit about how you decided to choose and to go into your chosen field? Well, kind of mentioned like on the panel, um, the career kind of chose me originally an undergraduate. I really wanted to be in law, even in high school. I'm like, oh, I want to be a lawyer. This is what I want to do. But towards the junior year of my undergraduate um, college career, I decided that 
that wasn't the path for me. And when applying, I knew I wanted to work with people within some capacity. So I was looking at education and then how I can bring in my sociology background and also getting into policy and changing. And when applying for various positions, I came across um, this research assistant position, which kind of incorporated all aspect of it. And then once in the field, I saw that there's an education component, there's the policy making of health policies and working with adolescents, particularly and other people within the communities. Is there a significant step or decision that you've made that you think now was very critical in terms of getting to where you are? Are there any hallmarks that you think, if it had not been for this choice, I wouldn't be here or at this particular juncture in my career? I really feel like in undergrad, I really had that moment where like, okay, am I applying for grad school? Am I applying for law schools? And I'm applying for jobs. Like, where am I gonna go? Is this really for me? When really, when I opened up that, that LSAT book and I was like, I don't think this is it. I don't, I don't think this is my path for me. And I had to really be real with myself. Like, this is something I had my mind set on, but know that this isn't for me anymore. And then now what do I do? So that part was kind of scary, but just having faith and knowing that everything was going to work out and I was going to find my way somehow. Who's been the greatest influence in your life up to this point? Who do you look up to? Who certainly helps to shape the decisions you make? I would definitely say my parents. My parents have been my backbone, my number one fans, my supporters, my everything. And without them, I don't know where I would be that support with them both having the, the different backgrounds that they do and how they raise myself and my brother that they have been extremely influential in my decision making and very supportive in my career path. You mentioned that they've been very supportive and influential. Are their career paths similar to what you've chosen, or is this a tremendous departure from the people you've known in your life and in your own family? Um, this is different because both my parents actually went through a similar situation where they had their set minds on what they were going to do and had different um, degrees and what they thought they were going to do and actually are currently working in different positions. So when I went through that point in my life where I was struggling with where should I go, they understood that because that's something that they experienced themselves. So I have one that's in retail management and then one that's in accounting, so they're more business influence and mine is more health associated. But, and again, we can still have that conversation with that struggle that we both faced. As you think about your career, I know in my own life, there's some things when I look back, there's an expression that says hindsight is 2020. You look back and you see things and you wish you had done things a little bit differently. But is there a something, a choice, a, a decision to move to a particular town to go to your school? Is there a decision that you would like to do differently if you could? Um, when thinking about it as far as education, I may be being a little bit more um, strict in my academics maybe, but still keeping on task, like I really enjoyed being a part of different organizations, being a part, having that, that building up rapport with dealing with different people has definitely been a huge asset with my current position, because if you can't talk to people, you, you definitely can't get them involved in participating in a program or talk to people in a community that might come from different educational backgrounds, and being able to work and be around different people have de has definitely been helpful within my career. Can you think of just a couple of things you would say someone would need to do to follow your steps? Just a couple of choices they've made. I feel like if you're at a, a moment right now where you don't know, definitely make a list of the things that you like to do. It's very important to see what you like to do and then look at what positions could work for you. And even one position or one type of field can have different ways to get there. So thinking about being in that public health field, you may never know that oh, I can incorporate a political science degree or sociology. Don't mean to cut you off, but we need to throw back to Jess, but we will continue after this. Next up, we have a young woman who knows what it means to take charge, and you'll be just as astounded as I am with her journey. Stay tuned for Saran's report on Sea Lay Sister of the Month. We'll be right back. Uh. It's the girls' night out, and we're dressed to kill, but it's way too late to order a meal. Everybody.
I'm Al Butler from 900 AM WURD. I'm Charisma McElwain from the CW Philly. Hey, what's up? This is Kyla Pratt. Hey, what's up? I'm O'Shea Loren from 100.3 WRMD, and you are watching The Hype. You're watching The Hype. And you're watching The Hype. Calling all music artists from around the world. Here's your opportunity to have your music featured on The Hype. We are looking for respectful hip-hop artists. R&B, soul, pop, dance, rock, and inspirational. All you have to do is send us six songs in MP3 format, six professional pictures, one music video if you have one, and a bio of the artist or group. For more info, visit claphilly.com. If you're an African-American girl between the ages of 14 and 18 and you'd like to participate in our workshops, please visit our website on the screen. You're watching The Hype, TV for, by, and about young women on Comcast Channel 66, Philly Cam. Loving me ain't complicated, hit it to me and I boom a rang it. First priority, ain't no side link. Play with my feelings and don't come out swinging. Feed me true, don't need no lies. Treat me good like I'm your prize. Make me feel like I'm Welcome back to The Hype. I'm Saran Sankofa, and this is our Sea Lake Sister of the Month segment, where we highlight a young lady between the ages of 12 and 25 who is making positive changes in her community. Today, we're here with Samuela Tachibache, who is currently a senior at the Philadelphia High School for Girls. Hi, Samuela. How are you? Hi, Saran. I'm good. Okay, so tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Okay, so I moved to the United States um, for, from Ghana, West Africa, about six, six to seven years ago. And right now, I am in the process of starting my own nonprofit organization where I want to collect gently used clothes and ship it to various villages in, in Africa. That's amazing. So what inspired you to start your charity? Uh, what, what inspired me to start my charity was basically being from Africa. Um, when I was living in Ghana, I was privileged enough to have everything, but, but, um, but some of my friends did not have the simple things that I had. So I kind of just wanted to go back to my country and go back to Africa and just give back to them. Okay. What lessons have you learned from your journey from Ghana to the States that you'll take, on, take with you? My journey is to definitely, um, is to definitely be involved in like, you know, like getting your education because in some countries ed education is not free, um, especially in, in Ghana. So be, um, be open and, ha and use the resources that you have available to you. Okay, what's next for you? Next for me is I hope to get um, accepted into the Wharton School of the U University of Pennsylvania in study marketing. Thank you so much. Thank You're really you. inspiring, Samuela. Thank you so much. Back to you, Jess. We would like to thank our DJ 007 and our special guests, Ms. Melissa Ann Hopley, Nisha Rose, Jameer Burley, Carmen Hagens, and Courtney Pulliam. Thank you so much for joining us today. We would like to thank everyone who came here. There's so many things that we've learned so far. We've learned that people should really follow what they love. Sometimes we'll be faced with definitions of what success is, but yours is different, and it's okay to keep going with that. You know that when, one of the things that's important is finding a role model within your life. Finding a role model can help you go through life's path because it's not easy to go with it on your own. If you would like to learn more about our Healthy Lifestyles relationship or would like to be part of our studio guest audience, please join us at clafilly.com. I'm Jessica, and for everyone, see you next time. Good looking now. G. Trying to claim you probably never heard of it. 